Hey, welcome to another edition of this crazy, crazy podcast. There were games that happened at Benjamin Gab. <laughs> <laughs> I say nothing. Others predicted the red, what, what. But before we get there, we see gentlemen that Kef is having a congress. Mr. Infantino came to visit, then Addis Ababa. Mm. Are, you, are, you, are you marinating him so that no, we, 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 we deal will, with him later? We, we will deal with him later. You don't no, I'm waiting for you guys. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I'm waiting for you guys. You're waiting for us. Yeah. Kev had a congress. Mm. Sure. And it's at this congress that you're starting to see the pattern of where things are going. Mm. How has Kev been for the last three years, Cox? Uh, if you look administratively at something that we spoke about, um, mm. you look at the profit that they've made uh, compared to other years, um, the sponsorship that have come in. Um, the da- deficit is down, the chief, deficit is down. From yeah. double digits to one. Yes, yes, eight. yes. So you look at those numbers and you say, okay, there's work that's being done. Uh, but but the North doesn't agree. Eh? <laughs> no, no, the North, the, the, the North is very clear. The North no. doesn't agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The North, they, they stick out like a <laughs> so they, they, they call themselves the European of Africa. Yeah. So <laughs> they, 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 they don't agree, but you know you can fight as as much as you want. They have it. There's a technical sponsor that came in. Puma came into the fray. Mm. Um, TikTok. You know, there's just a TV lot of rights. TV rights TV are now. Right, TV rights are now. You know, those are some of the things that we look at and we say, ah, big ups to Kev. Big ups to the leadership that we've had and the leadership that we possibly might have going into the elections. Due to the seat that this table gets there on the vote of Kev. <laughs> We, sorry, we don't get a seat. <laughs> we, don't get, we don't get a seat. But I see, sure. looking at that, you're looking under the leadership of Dr. Patrice Mutsipe. Sure. Does it become now very obvious that he should have a second term? I don't know what is Samuel Eto trying to do, trying to challenge for this position. Mm. Um, I, I don't see that working out for him. Mm. Um, Patrice has, has showed, as Cox has said earlier on, you look at the work that he has done. I mean, you've got schools, competition on the continental it's insane. level. It's insane. There's probably like 21 schools, if you look at it, mm. across across Africa. And then he tells you a bigger scope of, of the picture that Mzepe is here to, mm. to improve the, the continent in terms of football, and not only football, but people's lives, you know. People's lives are changing through his administration. And then tells you that he's doing such a great job through his foundations again as well, as much as people wouldn't want to associate that with him under that seat, but the work that he's doing, it's so tremendous and we, we have to give and, props to him. And I don't want to also just mention the the, the thing of, of, of doing things administratively at the office. You look at the coherent now that Kev has with FIFA mm. and you say, okay, maybe there's something there, you know, standards are being the applied. Conca to, uh, the are also conca- yes, yes. So I look at, for example, let's take a person like um, Coach Mulefinteki, uh, not Mulefinteki, it's Ramele Tswaka rather, mm. and you say, okay, he's been deployed to by FIFA to make sure that the standard has been followed throughout. And you look at the improvement of, of Malawi uh, youth, you look yeah. at the improvement of Lesotho youth. So there's, 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 there's a total coherent, and I that's mean, why you're constantly seeing FIFA being involved. Eto, Eto had a problem with running things at home, yeah. uh, so I think that it's going to work against him when, when you try to challenge this. 100%. But I hear you, I hear you, Kev. Thank you very much. You're doing a fantastic job. My little vote says second term for that day. Even, even before you close it on, mm. on, on that Damposa, we, mm. we also have to, to mention... One third term. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the, the, the reality of it when you look at foot, women's football as well. Oh, yes. Oh, and, and what yes, he has done yes, for yes, women's football, yes, yes, yes. his involvement in these, in these structures, it, mm. it shows that... Champions League. They're improving. The teams that are coming up to play in these tournaments. Mm. Who's the defending champions of the Women's Champions League? Ah, let's... <laughs> <laughs> okay, my Melody Santiago's champions of the Women's League. Champions League. Gentlemen, mm. there was a derby past weekend. What happened? I see you, you, you promised us other things. Now yeah, I Cox did. Now is wearing red. Yeah, I did. And I'm glad that we all saw the game. And we, we, we can point reference certain aspects of the game. But before we even talk about certain aspects of the game that influenced <laughs> the whole scope of mm. the game, you have to look at what Simba brought on the day. Mm. And it clearly shows that, you know, Fadlu and his technical team are onto something into the team. As I had predicted to say, I think finally, Komondi has met his match. And we saw it in the so game. So Fadlu and Wayne Sandilands. Ah, you no, can't run no, away no, from no, that. No, 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 I see. It, even, even if Komondi, I agree with the fact <laughs> that probably Komondi has met, not necessarily his match, because I, I told you, I was very clear here when I said the gap is just too big. 
Yes. So the gap sure. is closing, the, but it's the, not. So you first have to close the gap before mm. you go in there. Yeah. You did mention the fact that, yes, maybe there'll be an upset. And I think maybe it was an emotional decision. Because, <laughs> no, 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 not a chance. You coach, are aligned, chance. You are aligned to, to, to coach Fadu. And, yeah. and <laughs> not necessarily. It makes sense as a South African. But I mean, you look at the numbers because you are a respect guy. You love numbers. And I say, oh, Police no, I did mention previously that obviously if you look at the numbers, Yanga has the upper hand, of course. Yes. So who has the upper hand? Obviously, young Africans. So, <laughs> this is the very same guy that will come here and tell you uh, Ali has played 1,050 <laughs> yeah. for 20 years. Yeah. But you failed to take heed in the fact that Yanga has won a total of 31% uh, in, in the league. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, you look at the draw being 43 and, and, and with yeah. Simba being yeah. 26%. So, as a stats guy, you need to remain consistent. You can't go 1,000 no, years back Fox, to you Al must, Ali. You must understand, amnesia <laughs> happens at such moment. But on a... On, on an interesting thing, does the, does the closing of the gap mean that maybe has Komondi's Yanga reached saturation point? Not Have a chance. they reached the ceiling? Not a chance. Or it's as, just that Simba has done that well to close that gap so fast. Look, again, we have to mention the fact that, remember when a new coach comes in, mm. there's, there's sort of like an improvement psychologically for players to, to push themselves. Mm. And, and it happens in football. We've seen that happening in so many teams. Mm. And I think in this aspect, it's one of those reasons, but not discrediting what Fadlu is doing into the team. Mm. But then again, if you look at tactical awareness, te technical awareness of a younger team, mm -hmm. the, how they approach games, mm -hmm. I think they're, they're miles away when you look at that league. Mamposa, you're telling us about a ceiling uh, in a younger team. No, I'm asking. A, a ceiling in a younger team that can replace Aziski with a triple C. Not a chance. That thing will <laughs> never be a ceiling. Here's, here's the thing that is becoming a norm. It's always been, but now because of technology, media is becoming, and broadcasting, Referees are influencing the decisions of the game. Unfortunately. We will say to the ones that are wounded, your thoughts on the ref? Pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> Pathetic. Two penalties, two penalties should have been given to Simba in that game. Mm. And those were pretty much obvious, obvious penalties mm. for me, if you look at those, those decisions. And the, the unfortunate part, when you look at foot, football holistically without looking at this game specifically, if you have a big game like this, mm. and you have a ref becoming the center Mm. of decisions that, that are influencing the game. Mm. It's, it's, it's unfortunate for the players that put in the work, the coaches that put in the work, the admin staff that put in the work. Yeah. What is the question? The question remains that what are the refs doing behind, behind scenes to improve themselves? Okay. And yet we keep selecting them for these huge games. But, but Cox, yeah. we've seen refs being a big part of... I, of I, 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 I want to quote, there's a referee that we, we used to love. And, and I think he's the poster boy of referees. The uh, bold Italian. Yeah, the bold Italian. <laughs> um, and I quote, open quote, the referee is there to serve football and protect the integrity of the game. No, that is not happening. The, the, not the integrity chance. of the game is gone <laughs> because of the refs. Yeah. So Because any good work that Yanga did now falls to the ref. Yes. yes. Any good work that Simba did is like... Nobody gets so, to... So you have a Simba that has applied it themselves. You look at a coach, Fadlu, that has managed to have an unbeaten run throughout the season in, in a different league, and he comes and he applies himself, and he's still carrying that momentum. He takes it into a league match, and now he has these rivals that he has to try and close the gap. Tactically, he closes the gap. Tactically, he applies himself. Tactically, he has the buy-in of his players to apply themselves in a match of this magnitude. Then you have these dubious decisions. So... It, 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 as you've said, it nullifies the effort of, 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 of Coach Fadlu, the amount of work that's been done, the studying, the analysis, the TV work, mm. the videos, the homework that the, that the players had to do. You know, they go, had to go home and do the homework. And it also nullifies the, wor the work of, of Young. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that as well. Kev gets, gets implica implicated in these kind of situations. FIFA gets implicated in these mm. kind of situations. Because then somebody then says, AI, hey, it's a Kev rev. But then Even again, it was a local derby. But then again, to broaden the conversation, we then bring in the conversation of VAR into it because application yeah. versus yes, 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 the yes, last yes. segment of it is... So, but, but here's my thing. In Africa, we know that VAR comes in at the very end of the, gay, of the competition. Mm. Yeah. Is it becoming that dire that even in local leagues it must be there? And because at the WSM, in South Africa, 
you've seen teams, you've seen Sundowns benefit, you've seen Pirates benefit, you've seen Chiefs benefit. Yeah, and, you're going, and, and, and you've even seen coaches say, I've benefited and I have no, no shame. shame. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's a problem. But I also, yes, we can bash the referees and I understand that we have to because we have to call them out because they have a certain duty to uphold into, this, into, the, into the game. But you also look at the... The CAF, uh, you know, the, the, the tournament that we've just had now, you know, the AFCON that exactly. we had. And you say the officiating and you look at it and you say, hey, it's hey, like top-notch officiating, you know. Mm. You go back and you look at, you, you barely have refereeing issues. I, I, I go back and I, I, I look at a referee that wanted to give Mo Salah his cards and say, are you, do you want to be the referee? Do you want to be the referee? <laughs> you know? and, 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 and those are the, and that's goals, by the way. Yeah. You look at those things and say, the referees in this big tournament, they have it sorted out. They, yes. VAR take it into account, yes, that it will have those effects where they look at the big decisions. But the general refereeing is top-notch. So where do they Question. lose it in terms of the... Question. Mm. Are referees going to play a big part in terms of the Champions League going forward? We understand VAR will be there. But VAR did not help Yanga when they were at Loftus. Yeah, <laughs> actually did. <laughs> it helped Sundowns. Yeah, but, but when you then look at it, you then say... Games could be decided on referees, and these championships are too big to be decided on one man's either mistake or incompetency. Look, for me, for me, it's, it's, it's again, I bring it back to, to the game itself. We, we understand that if me and Gox are playing against one another and you're refing the game, me and him are going to be emotional. It doesn't need you to be emotional about the decisions that you take. You still have enough time to, to go to your linesman and say, look, I'm not sure about this decision. Irrespective of VAR, VAR is just something that's new. Before that, there were the refs were, were doing their job without VAR. Mm. You can go to your linesman and say, look, man, I'm not sure about this decision. What do you think? We've seen referees do that. There's nothing wrong with that. The delayed time and the delayed time versus the VAR thing is still the same thing. All that it says is that by the time we get to the second round, <laughs> when now Yanga are the host, that's going to be fireworks. <laughs> yeah, but you're forgetting a conversation need... here. Well, uh, one of one of our guys is having issues in a certain league, you know, just just had a, a, a loss, and it's quite interesting to see to see how the media is. He's, he's a darling in that in that area of of the continent, and I wonder why. Why? Why? I don't I don't know, man. Maybe it's the football that he played at Sundowns at some point. Look, you 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 you've got to be able to say, and those are some of the things. Again, referees are making decisions that you're going. Way that Coach Rulani is not having the best of time because ref exactly. and that's what I'm saying. Exactly. Do we now have to, as Kev, Kev sits at their Congress, mm. and you know we've got the African club uh, whereby yeah. the president of Yanga and uh, from Kaiser Chiefs we've got Jessica who's the who's the VP. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should they then start saying in our leagues? I know in South Africa we make it, the minister, the minister shouted, yeah, I'm going to make it. <laughs> the, these Without things, details. These it things takes, require process. process. Yeah, <laughs> these process. things require pro process. Because I can tell you now, on the 2nd of November, FNB Stadium, there's going to be a decision <laughs> that requires the ref. Yeah, uh, but, Mamposa, um, if, you, if you're going to develop the game, you have to develop it holistically. Yeah, I spoke of a Mauritania that's developing. You, you see these smaller countries that are coming and developing and you're having these young boys that are developing and they get to elevate the standard of football in the continent. So if you're going to develop the standard of football in the continent, you have to make sure that you equally develop the people that handle this standard because it nullifies all the preparation that people yeah. do. Um, so. I, I, jobs are on the line. Jobs are on the line. Coaches get fired. You know, you know, it's a thankless job. Relegation you know? is on. But you also, <laughs> Cox, there's an incident that I saw. Even these refs are not careful. Yeah. They will be chased out. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a ref running <laughs> from the state. Yeah, in Malawi. Uh, there was a ref. Uh, he, wasn't, he was initially promised hands. Mm. And then he carried on with those <laughs> dubious officiating. He was chased out of the stadium. They, he, they, they, they caught on with him. They, you know, we don't encourage. We don't encourage those kind of scenes. We don't encourage supporters taking the law into their own hands. Emotions are there. Referees, if they continue to have these things, then it, 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 it's borderline. It borders on people that are watching the match and they've invested. And you must also take into account that people are, you know, they have <laughs> a lot riding on these matches beyond just emotions being invested. Uh, but nowadays, uh, there's a uh, five rand per game. Yeah. <laughs> there's betting that's involved. Exactly. People are not just betting emotions, mm, but it's and also, yeah, and, then, yeah. and you've got to be able to say, 
With all that said and done, the Champions League is about to start. <clears throat> Do you think the refs are ready? Yeah, I think they are ready. Um, I'd like to, to think the off FCON that we hosted gave us a good refereeing point of view. And I think we need to continue from then on. Cox, are the refs ready for the Champions League and the <laughs> Confed Cup? <laughs> uh, I'm on the fence on this one. Um, they have to prove me otherwise. Mm. Uh, you know, um, I've seen, yes, the latter stages of the Champions League, yes. The group stages, we'll see. Uh, but generally in the group stages, you don't have a lot of calls where people are, teams teams are cautious in their approach. Okay. So yeah, we've seen an Ali that was playing sundowns and they were cautious and they got hands at home, you know, those kind of things. Mm. So it's, 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 I don't think the referees will be tested much, but yeah, I, I'm still on the fence with this one. Referees are not ready. If I take away the candidness, mm. younger one, Chief. Yeah, younger one. So that's the result. Dubious. There's no result that says three points and says dubious next to <laughs> I, I was attacked here by the fool. <laughs> uh, uh, and I said, yeah, but in the Super League, it was penalties. And, and, and you know, I, I had predicted that Al-Ali would... Hey, I was attacked. And they said, it's a loss. And it, it is a, a loss. A loss is a loss. No, I'll take it. Yeah. Referees' decisions no, or it. not. For me, all I'm asking is that, can the refs be fair? And African leagues as a whole, they have to now start considering VAR. Because you look at South Africa, the second of November is coming. There's going to be some referees' decisions that are debated. Mm. The game between Yanga and Simba got debated. Mm. Before we get to the knockout stages where there's VAR... Mm. Imagine that because do refs go to these games? Does the crowd play in, in, a part? In actual fact, you're taking it too far when you're saying the second. Just this weekend. Hey! Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> hey! Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget to click subscribe. Let us know what you think. Congratulations to Yanga. And on the second, I'll be saying congratulations to Sundowns. Reverend's decision or not, yeah. I'm I saw a cherry and it was red.